Hey there, welcome to another radio related video and this is the review of the Redson RP300 medium wave AM, FM and shortwave receiver. So, it's a small little receiver, I uh, got it today. It costs about $40 on eBay and it came from China, took two weeks. Uh, what comes with it is this power adapter, completely useless in North America because it's 220 volts, but in Europe you'll be happy to have a power adapter. And um, also comes with uh, little earphones, like right here, and comes with a little wire antenna that clips directly to the um, antenna itself. So this is the uh, wire itself with the little clip that actually clips directly so when you have your antenna for example you just clip it on the antenna like this and push it on so it's cool because uh, not everybody has wire at home to make an antenna so it's a nice little add-on for uh, the radio and uh, of course it also comes with this uh, nice little carrying pouch Redson carrying pouch vinyl with velcro so when you bring it along you can actually uh, keep it in a safe little pouch that uh, will help you keep the radio clean and without scratches hopefully now this radio has FM reception from 670 megahertz up to 108 it has the medium wave uh, available for Europe at 522 to 1620 kilohertz and also North America from 520 to 1710 so the expanded AM band is available there also shortwave is divided into two bands from 2300 kilohertz up to 7500 kilohertz and the second band is from 9200 kilohertz up to 22,000 kilohertz uh, so you don't miss out much on the out of band because each band is complete I mean the first band from 2300 to 7500 is continuous and the second band from 9200 to 22,000 kilohertz is continuous which means that you don't miss out anything you might miss out a little bit the 41 meter band um, above 7500 but um, you don't miss out much which is pretty cool now radios in Chinese so you need that little manual that is actually not really a manual but what was in the box is these paper sheets of paper that are actually the Redson RP manual in English. So basic features of this receiver is that it's a PLL tuned receiver so it is really precise in its frequency coverage. It has direct entry. Little quirk on that is that you have to press the button here. For example I'll turn it on We'll put the band on shortwave for example. I want to enter 6000 kilohertz. You have to press the little button here until the display clears and press the kilohertz you want. So it's kind of a reversed way of doing it. I'm used to entering the frequency and then pressing enter for example or just entering the full frequency and it's already in. So that's a little bizarre that you need to press that button before you enter the frequency. Second of all, um, your up down button here. What is cool about the up down is that, well, it gives you 5 kilohertz increment. It can scan and what's cool about the scanning on this radio is that it doesn't mute the audio. You actually have full audio while it's scanning. That is cool because very often when you scan on regular shortwave radios, it mutes and you miss out on some stations that could be there weaker but not strong enough that the radio will not stop on them so that's a nice feature the volume control is here it tends to be a little fast on the steps uh, each step making it from you know stronger stronger but they're a little fast so uh, in a quiet environment your the volume level actually increases by a lot Audio is really nice on this radio. It's a very, very good radio for uh, shortwave listening. The audio is extremely cool. Uh, if we go here to the second band on 9625, this is the uh, CBC Northern Quebec, for example. 
So you can see that audio's good. Reception conditions are pretty good. Very sensitive receiver on shortwave, it's very good. The supplied antenna really helps a lot also. So it's a good shortwave radio. The drawback on the shortwave side is the fact that this is a single conversion radio, it means that you have images showing up on the shortwave bands at places where there should not be any stations. So you just gotta be careful about that. But it's not really a big nuisance that I've noticed. Uh, other features is there's an alarm clock and there's a little, uh, if we turn off the lights here, this is what it looks like. It's very dim on the display light and that's one of the bad news. In a dark environment it's kind of almost difficult to read the display because it's too dim. So that's a little drawback about the light. Uh, far from that, you've got, of course, on the right side, the tuning button. You've got your uh, selectivity switch here for uh, wide and narrow. You've got a lock function here. You've got your DX local switch. Earphone, stereo through FM, that's cool. And 3 volt DC, negative uh, center for AC adapter. That is supplied, it's just not supplied for North America. Now, the drawback that I see on the tuning is that if you tune from the dial button, it is only one kilohertz increments. You cannot change that. So it means that this is a little long in tuning around when you tune. So you gotta use the buttons at the bottom here for the five kilohertz or enter the new frequency that you wanna listen to. You just heard that that's another little annoyance here. Every time you enter a frequency, it has that little tone, and it's depending on volumes. The higher volume, the higher the tone. That's a little drawback, but and it can get strong as you see. So that's a little annoying. I don't know why the uh, the, the synthesizer actually does that, but it's. Uh, uh, sometimes it's strong enough that it gets annoying. Uh, for the uh, medium wave and short wave, this radio really, really performs extremely well. And you'll see in the test that I'll be doing on the videos of short wave and medium wave that it's really good. Uh, on FM, it overloads easily in a big city like here. And it's under par in the sensitivity. So keep in mind that it's not a DX machine for FM. It's pretty amazing on shortwave and on medium wave. I must say, I was uh, very, very pleased with the reception. So for $40, you get a PLL tuned radio, which means it's all digital tuned, so very precise. And it's also very sensitive and very good at receiving the stations. It's powered by two AA batteries that go here at the bottom. You've got the little inch to put it at an angle. So for the price, uh, if you can, uh, you know, accept the fact that it's Chinese on the cabinet, um, it's pretty good, and it's kind of an amazing little radio for $40. Uh, keep in mind that I always put it in perspective, $40 is not much for a shortwave radio, so um, my comments are always dependent on the price paid. So, uh, you know, if you, if you paid this $200, it's a bad radio. But you paid the $40, it becomes a good radio for the price. So, uh, nice little radio, and I think uh, you could be pleased. And if you look at the size, we'll compare it, for example, to a Degen DE1103. So you can see that the size compared to the bolt radios here, if we look at it. There we go. I'll put it here at the bottom. You can see that. DJN 1103 is pretty much pretty bigger, um, so it's a small, small little portable, and uh, I think it's a nice digital radio if you want to travel and you're afraid of getting it maybe stolen or losing it somewhere. It's not too expensive and it's a good performer. So uh, this was a review of the Retson RP300 medium wave AM shortwave in two two bands from uh, 2300 to 7500 and 9200 to 22,000 kilohertz 
and of course FM with FM stereo and the earbuds that are included with the radio. So if you enjoy these radio videos and reviews, click the subscribe button at the top of the screen. You'll be informed of the videos we put online. And if you have any comments or questions, let us know. And we'll try to answer any questions. And of course, it's always fun to have feedback. So thanks for watching. 73.